Do you guys like detective stories? Who here likes detective stories? Beautiful. Then I will tell a detective story. Okay, it was 17th of April 1994. It's America, not far away from Boston, little town. And this is Katie Holmes. This is a picture, of course. She had a regular day. She served breakfast to her son. And then she dropped him at school and went to her work. And she works in the bank as bank assistant. So she goes to the work and it's a regular day and nothing happens in this bank until four men with guns enter the bank. And she sees gun uh, in, in, just pointed at her face and she and other people in the bank are uh, ordered to go to this small room and they are locked there and then nothing happens for a long, long time, what seemed to them as a long time. And then... The door opens, probably the robbers. Ah, I forgot the important thing. The robbers were holding umbrellas to hide themselves. They were in masks and they were holding umbrellas to hide themselves from the security cameras. So nothing was happening. They were locked in this room and nothing were, was happening for a long, long time. And then the door open, opens and they see policemen in that doorway. Of course, that was robbery, the bank was robbed, but what seemed to be a long, long time took only five minutes for robbers to take all money, all cash from the bank. So, these policemen start the investigation. And obviously, they started with looking at the camera recordings that anyone would do, right? They looked at camera recordings, but there was not much there because they had masks on their face, they had gloves, and they have these umbrellas to cover themselves from the recordings. They didn't see anything in, the, in those recordings. So they started to talk with witnesses. And there was one witness who said that they saw, they saw a person running away from the bank. Someone was running away from the bank at the moment when the robbery was happening. So they start to investigate this clue and try to find out if that person... It's a good suggestion that someone who is running away from the bank when the while there is a robbery, that this person can be connected somehow to the robbery, right? So they start to investigate this possibility. And this happens with performance as well. Like, for example, when your website is slow and you have issues with performance, is it possible that images are not optimized, that they are not lazy loaded or vice versa, the first screen is lazy loaded and that's why the, the website is slow. Can it be that images are not in the right format, that they are not compressed, that they're served in the much larger size that they should be, for example, in mobile, for mobile, you have to have small image, but it's served as a huge one and then someone uploads images in raw format, uh, in the size that no one ever will use. Is it possible? Yes, of course. So this can be a suspect in performance. So they started to investigate that first suspect and they found out that that person had a criminal record, which made, makes things kind of more suspicious. But that person had nothing to do with that robbery. They were passing by, they saw what, what is happening, that the robbery is happening there, and as they had criminal record, this guy just ran away because he didn't want to do anything with the robbery that was happening at that time. He wasn't related to that robbery. And sometimes it happens even with good suggestions in performance as well. So they were looking for other, detectives were looking for other possibilities and the other possibility came in in uh, two months and they found out that one of the bank workers was living a luxury life that kind of doesn't suit the bank worker. So they started to investigate this bank worker and from where he got his money and other bank workers as well because they had this idea that maybe it's an insider work. So they investigated everyone who works in that bank. And it happens with performance as well. It can be icon font, for example, that you use 
on your website, you know, uh, these icon phones like uh, dash icons or awesome, uh, or awesome icons uh, or uh, other icon phones where you use only two icons for mobile to toggle that menu, to toggle it open and to close it. And then you load 300 kilobytes of font uh, not using its render blocking, it's uh, impacting your performance. It's a very usual story. It's very possible. So this is another possibility. And for them, it was a good it was a good clue. If someone in the bank living life that doesn't suit their um, wellness status, it looks suspicious. So they checked all bank workers. And they found nothing. It wasn't related to the robbery at all. They made sure that it's not related to that robbery. The time passed and they had no other clues for long, long time until, until March 1995. Are you following me? It's a year after. They didn't have any other clues. And then someone gave them a tip that one of the members of local gang might have been involved in that robbery that happened a year ago. And they started to investigate this and search for the connections between local gang and uh, these bank workers and this robbery and st started to investigate all this. But then again, it was nothing. Same with performance. It can be JavaScript code. It absolutely can be JavaScript code that is slowing down your website. Either it's loaded inside HTML or a separate files and all JavaScript uh, is not optimized. They all, all this code interconnected and they are loading in front of each other and that JavaScript code that is essential, that is necessary to be loaded in the very beginning, somehow it gets loaded in the end, that's why you have this bad experience with uh, with a bad experience uh, with um, performance of the website. Can it be this reason? Absolutely, it can be. But for detectives, it turned out that local band, uh, lo local gang, had nothing to do with that robbery as well. It's almost a year passed since then and they they had to come back to the beginning to the start they had no clues anymore and they had to come back and to look at what they have and they had camera recordings that they have already investigated and there was nothing there they didn't see anything there and they started to look at camera recordings as well uh, again and what they noticed this time everything was covered Faces, hands, um, uh, they cannot see anything. But what they notice this time is that robbers seemed to know the location of the money and the furniture, and they were not hesitant to go anywhere. They knew exactly where are they going, what they are doing. So it brought officers, detectives, to the conclusion that it can be actually the insiders who robbed the bank, but they have already checked everyone who worked in bank before. So they were thinking, who are those, they, uh, those insiders who are not bank workers? And they started to check something else. They started to check, they had an idea that it can be, oh, sorry, that it can be, idea, that it can be people who deliver money to the bank and take money out of the bank, the armored car. And that was the answer. They found the criminals. They, it was long investigation, of course, but that was the right answer and the case was closed. What this story teaches us, that they had what they needed to answer the question who the uh, criminals were from the very beginning. They had it information in the very beginning. They just didn't know how to read it properly. This is a huge luck with uh, investigations. Even in movies, it doesn't happen that, uh, that in that cool way. But for performance, we always have information that we can use to 
uh, investigate what is really happening. So going back to our suspects, uh, they had three suspects. One was running away from the bank. Another one was the bank worker who is uh, having luxury life. Another one is uh, a local again. Were these bad ideas? Were these bad suggestions? No, this is absolutely possible scenarios. This is... These are good clues. They, uh, it's not that they were not smart to suggest this. These are good clues and this really could happen. Just in this case, that wasn't what happened. And the same with performance. Can it be icon phones, images, JavaScript, CSS, heavy backend processes with all cron and API requests and what's not slow server? It can be. It can be a bloated database and I can continue forever, but we don't have time for that. A third parties, uh, anything. It can be anything with performance. But, but this is so. These suggestions are absolutely possible, and they are absolutely right. So, with performance, we don't need to do guesswork. We always have information to start with and to conclude what is really happening there. Uh, that's me. Uh, my name is Sabrina. I'm performance engineer, and Today, I want uh, to show my, because I speed up for press websites every day for my clients and for my clients' clients, because I work with the different agencies. And I want to show the process, how I do this, because I see the pattern why good developers struggle with performance. I see the reason why good developers struggle with performance is that they solve not right problems. They solve non-important problem, problems in a good way. Like they find the best way to solve a problem that shouldn't be solved at all. And this is the main... A lot of people think that uh, performance is like a black box that only chosen can open, but this is so not true. You need to figure out one, or two, three at the most problems that you need to solve. Solve them and this is it, and not waste your time on anything else that doesn't matter. So, um, this is a mind map. I will give a link to download this mind map. This is my process. I will give it uh, in the end. You will be able to download and bother with taking pictures or something. So, in the very beginning, when you start working on performance, you need to answer one very important question. Does the problem exist at all? Does this site has a problem, believe me or not, but this is ha this happens a lot. Someone would come to me and say, Sabrin, can you look at this site? And I'm saying, there is no issues. Let's see. Here are two screenshots for you. Who would, number one, number two, who can tell me where the problem does not exist? I have one right answer. where the problem does not exist. One. There are a few people saying one, and this is correct. Look, this is page speed and size. This is thing you shouldn't be caring about. This is not important. What is the difference be between these two screenshots? You can see those little letters over there, Core Web Vitals assessment passed, and here Core Web Vitals assessment failed. So even if you do test in page speed and size, you have you can have whatever whatever here, but if Core Web Vitals assist, assessment passed, it means there is no problem because Page Speed Insights is a lab test. And what you have there, Core Web Vitals assessment, this is the real user data that is coming from Chrome user report that Google has. And uh, this is really what is happening on your website. So whatever numbers you have here, it doesn't matter if you have Core Web Vitals assessment passed. This is, this is it. The website doesn't have a problem. Yeah, no issues. There are issues. And you can go and have a beer. But if the website doesn't pass that assessment and you have Core Web Vitals failed, then you know Yes, there is an issue with Core Web Vitals. Okay, so from here, we can start working on the issue because it is 
it does exist actually if core web vitals the website doesn't pass core web vitals then the next step that you can do is that you can go you don't need lots of tools you don't need any secret technologies nothing you are going to search google.com that's where all this uh, seo uh, you have all this uh, seo stuff as well so you go to the search console by google and there is a tab there that is called core web vitals and you open the tab and then there is um, uh, mobile and there is desktop data and there you have everything you need everything you need to know at this stage so you have uh, mobile and desktop, and then you can click on each. I don't know if I have slide for that. No, uh, you can do it after this talk. You can go there and uh, uh, click on each, and you will see there is uh, detailed da data. What exactly is not passing and examples of the pages that are not passing. For now, we will just open this. Okay. Uh, on this screenshot, we have uh, desktop is passing and uh, mobile is not passing. You can see a uh, yellow, mm, yellow thing there. And we see that 111 URLs are not passing. So we defined at this step that the problem exists. It does not exist on desktop and it does exist on mobile. Our next step is to narrow it down and to figure out what is the problem on mobile. Uh, specify, yeah. Um, this is example of what I do. I would just put everything into the spreadsheet, and I will have this um, uh, LCP CLS and uh, uh, not first input delay, but uh, interact, interact, interaction to the first paint, and I will put values from Google Search Console into my uh, spreadsheet. I will put. Um, value and I will put example of the URL where this is happening. This is super important because uh, 10 minutes, okay, uh, because uh, different pages on your website have different um, uh, design, different layout. And the, if you have issue with LCP, say, in one group of the URLs, it doesn't mean that you have this same issue in the another group. So when you try to figure out the problem, it's very important to find URL that, that has that problem so that you can work with it later. All right, so you go there and uh, you have these groups, you find the URL that represents the problem that you are working on, and you have the data here that is telling you how bad is bad, not just not passing, but exactly the, the exact number. What is the next step? Um, wait a second. This is my regular uh, spreadsheet that I'm using. Uh, like uh, I would put desktop mobile and data for it. And then I will mark like this. So uh, I will mark if LCP is not passing, uh, CLS is not passing, and they are like in the yellow zone, I will mark them and I will mark them with numbers. And then I will mark what is not passing on mobile the same way. And then I would put uh, values there as well and examples. And the next, next question, after I know exactly problem, the value, and the example where it happens, I can move to the next step, but not earlier. So we have the issue to fix now. Now, very important question. Can I reproduce this issue in the lab? Can I, from my computer, replicate what is happening for the clients? Because if I cannot do previous steps, I cannot replicate, I don't know what I'm working on. I don't know what is the starting point and I don't know what is the end point. So my next task is to replicate what most of the users are experiencing and uh, how we can do this. All right, uh, for basic setup, you don't need anything but Chrome development tools. You have... Um, in Chrome, you have development tools, and what you can do there, you can do two things. You can, um, wait a second, if I have this, yes. Um, so you need the tab that is called network, and then you have this number two, device toggle, where you can toggle the device and pretend that you are a mobile user, or pretend that you are a desktop user for the larger screens. And then you have this connection throttling, which is uh, on this screenshot, for example, 3G, and you throttle connection, to like you make, 
of course, every if you have uh, Starlink, for example, and it's 500 megabits, uh, every website will be fast. But you need to throttle connection to your user's speed to experience what they are experiencing so that you can replicate what they're experiencing, fix the issue, and then test it again and confirm that in the um, conditions that they have, there is no issue that you fixed what you were supposed to fix. And then you have, uh, I won't go into this uh, in details now because we don't have time for this. And this stuff you can Google. This is very easy because uh, mm, it's hard to Google the way you should be thinking about the performance. But a lot of things in performance you can Google. How to read waterfall, how to, how to replicate the connection. This stuff is easily Googled, so you can find it yourself. And then you have groups of assets. Right. Mm, th then there is another important tool that is uh, uh, extension for the Chrome. Uh, it's called Web Vitals, but there are a few of them. You need Web Vitals from uh, the author, uh, Eddie Osmani. What it does, it tells you with this law, so you throttled connect, for example, I throttled con connection to the 3G and then I ch switched to pretend that I am a mobile, uh, uh, that I am mobile user. And then I can, through this Chrome extension, I can see what um, uh, what is the LCP, what is CLS in these conditions, and also it shows you, like, uh, for example, your LCP is such and such, say, 8 seconds, and it is similar to what 82% of visitors of your website experience. So it will uh, give you a clue um, how your experience replicates the real experience, the real user experience on the, your website. We have five minutes left. I'm really sorry. I'm uh, I'm not uh, that fast as I was thinking of. I will get an overview of the of the um, of the entire thing, and you will be able to download this process um, via the link. So the most important thing. I already told what is the most important. If you get this one thing from this talk is that uh, before solving any problem with performance, before trying to do anything like optimizing images, optimizing phones, blah, blah, before doing anything, you have to detect the issue very precisely, you know, to know exactly what you're working on. Like, okay, I'm working on LCP on mobile with these conditions, like with this um, internet connection on these URL groups. You have to be able to replicate it and only then you go to the reasons why it happens. All right, very quickly, we'll skip this. Uh, another tool to use, uh, it's uh, called uh, Treo SH. Uh, this is to, in um, so now when you know the issue, you need to investigate it. And there are few tools very, very convenient that you can use, for example, Treo SH. This shows, for example, difference. You see every, everywhere is green, but um, I think it's BBC site, uh, website, uh, everywhere is green, but in Africa it's yellow, and you can see that in some regions it's red. It's very useful, nice tool and free. Then there is webpagetest.org. You can um, simulate connections and uh, make requests from different parts of the world. Very, very um, convenient as well. Now, um, after you have the problem, you need to find one, ideally, one big reason why this problem exists. Not 20, not 10. One, if you're as lazy as I am, you want to have one problem that you solve and it will give you the most benefit that you can get. So you need to try to figure out what is the, the most the most um, impacting thing and how to figure out it. This is another thing that you can Google, how to figure out its waterfall. Just Google how to use waterfall, how to read waterfall. You can't, if, you, if you're trying to improve performance of the website, you can't get away with it. You have to, re to learn how to read all this stuff that looks scary, but in, fa in fact, it, it's not. So how to read waterfall would be a search request to understand how to read waterfall. But if you didn't do the previous work, it's 
can t- it can take you a life <laughs> to optimize one website and you i am sure you have more 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 fun things to do in your life so possible cause for each then for each you define the main thing and you i'll skip this important part but you can see it then in the mind map that you will uh, download then all right i'll talk about this uh, just one minute um <laughs> there are okay two minutes <laughs> All right, this is a very important tool, very simple, very easy. Uh, most of the times people tend to blame their hosting environment for being slow, like my server is slow, uh, this is hosting, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this is a cool test to check if it is the hosting, because uh, in my experience, it may be one time out of 20 when it is really the hosting, and most times it's not, it's, it's you. Uh, <laughs> so this tool can check if it is the hosting or not. If you have all greens here, then it's fine. You have to find the issue inside the website, inside the server, and so on. So yeah, this is the we have identified the main thing. Uh, then only this, only here we apply the fixes in the right order, and the right order very important. The right order. You will start not with CLS, not with FID. You need to start with. LCP because this LCP thing will impact sometimes mm, most of the times FID or INP they are the cause of LCP and CLS will change while you're working on LCP so when you are applying fixes you have to start with largest content will paint and then you move to first input delay or uh, interaction to first to next paint and then only after you move to CLS to the uh, cumulative layout shift Okay, and then you test, you test in the lab through that uh, extension if the problem is solved. Very important thing in the beginning, you remember we marked under which conditions and which group of URLs had the issue. Very important to note that down and to test after under the same condition. The conditions should be the same. So you can tell that under these conditions, there was a problem. I replicated, I did this and this, and now under the same condition, there is no problem. I am a superstar, right? Then, um, sorry. Ah, this is it. So um, if, the website after you did this process and the website is not passing what you can do you can go to step four and try investigate again one main thing that is not part that uh, is causing issues at this point and then continue the process and finally at some point you will have beer all right uh where to download the process over here uh on my website it's hard it will be hard to type so here is the qr code uh, WordPress performance course, I, it's, it doesn't exist yet. I'm working on it, but if you will be interested, when I finish it, if you will be interested, uh, here is the QR code to sign up so that I notify you. And thank you very much for coming to my talk. Obrigado, Porto. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, sorry. And Q&A, if you want to ask any questions in the hallway. <laughs>